The following program is to provide entertainment and information. It is not considered to be any legal or investment advice. Good morning, appraisers. Let's talk some real estate. You're listening to The Voice of Appraisal, the number one appraisal podcast in America that always brings you the latest news and information from the front lines of the real estate market, anything from market conditions, appraisal regulation, cryptocurrencies, big bank news, folks. you have a question, we have all of your answers. We are the one-stop source. For all of your real estate appraisal information needs, if you want to be in the know, you have definitely tuned in to the right show. I'm your host, Phil Crawford. Happy to have all of you here with us today. Kevin, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Good. And before we get started, because of the time of year that it is and that, I have just two words to say. Tell me. Who day? Who day? Who Who day? day? I tell you, I'm still, my voice is not 100% because I was screaming at the television so much the last (laughs) few days. In Burrow, we trust, Kevin. In Burrow, we trust. It is going to be a crazy, awesome weekend because the Bengals are going to win the Super Bowl, Kevin. They're going to win the Super Bowl. Now, I don't want to say when it is, but my my birthday is this month. Your birthday is, your birthday is on Super Bowl Sunday. You can say that. Right. Your birthday, yes. My birthday is on Super Bowl Sunday. Yes. Yes. I so hope that I get a Bengal victory. You're going to get a Bengal victory. You're going to get, in Burrow, we trust. It's going to be just fine. It has been a long time coming for the city of Cincinnati. That's for sure. There's going to be a lot of wild, drunk, unprotected sex in this city come Sunday night, Kevin. That's just me. And that's just you. <laughs> I was about no, I was about ready to say. Hopefully, it happens in my house too, and maybe my wife will actually join me. I don't know, Kevin. I don't know, but it's going to be an exciting time, Kevin. That is for sure. And as always, folks, we are broadcasting from the great city of Cincinnati. All good things come from the great city of Cincinnati. We have a lot of news to go over, a lot of appraisal information to get into, and let's talk about this desktop product that's out there throughout the entire country, Kevin. I was just on Gary Rosignol's show on 1480 WDJO talking about the desktop products and things like that, and recently Fannie Mae made the announcement that after March 19th of this year, Fannie Mae is going to allow desktop appraisals, desktop appraisals on purchase transactions so they allow waivers on purchase transactions and now they're going to allow desktops on purchase transactions now as most of you know i have always said that i don't have a problem with desktop appraisals and desktop products okay right as long as they match the appropriate scope of work which means they usually were used in like a low ltv situation a small equity line portfolio acquisition things like that but now we're going to bring the desktop appraisal into the purchase space I kid you not, Kevin, this thing is going to be out of control. Gary Rosenthal and I broke it down on Saturday. It's going to be a 150% show. Garbage in, garbage out. Let me tell you, it is going to be insane. Okay, I have talked to a lot of local lenders here in Cincinnati. I've talked to a lot of regional lenders throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And for most of them, this product is dead on arrival. Here's the issue that you're going to run into. There's going to be a lot of issues with desktop products and purchases. I don't think people are understanding the nuances and the emotion that take place in the real estate appraisal markets. First of all, remember, 10% of the time, the appraisal value does not meet the purchase contract price. Okay, So the opinion of market value does not meet contract price. On average, it's about 10% of the time. In those transactions where that appraised value does not meet the purchase contract, people get upset. Mm -hmm. They get emotional. Who is the one party in the transaction that gets the most emotional? That is the seller, because the seller already had the contract in place. The seller was already banking on that much money coming in. They're the ones that get the most emotional when that contract does not come in or when that appraisal does not come in. Well, guess what? What is going to be the number one thing, the number one thing that the sellers always say when the appraised value does not meet contract, and it is a desktop appraisal? What's the number one excuse they're going to say? Well, of course, it's going to be the appraiser never walked inside the house. The appraiser never walked inside of the house, Kevin. That is going to be the number one thing (laughs) that every single seller is going to say out there. I'm I'm a lay person. Am I the only one saying I don't know if you're the only one that has the common sense or not. Seriously, it's just going to be a mess. The sellers are going to be so mad and so upset. And I don't really give a damn how good this 3D camera, this super duper awesome new camera that some of these firms are going to use. I don't care how good that is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter because the appraiser never walked inside the house. The appraiser never walked inside the house. That is going to be the number one complaint from sellers out there today. Remember, when it comes to the appraisal waiver, 
that impacts the buyer. Right. That's on the buyer. Okay, so if the buyer says, I'm waiving the appraisal, so be it, it's done. But when it comes to the desktop appraisal, desktop appraisal on purchase transaction, who does that have the biggest impact against? And that is the selling party, the seller, the seller. And I'll tell you something, the sellers these days are emotional. They're emotional, and the real estate agents are extremely emotional. The entire country right now is nothing but a big pile of emotion. People are pissed when they get up in the morning. They're pissed when they go to bed. They're not having enough naked bingo sex. It is out of control, folks, and that is the country that we live in today. And if these companies are out there doing desktop products on purchases, those sellers and those listing agents are not going to be happy when the appraiser does not walk into the house and the opinion of value does not meet the contract price. Hey, Phil. Yes. The appraiser's never been in the, the house. The appraiser's never been in the house. The appraiser. Ne- well, we have a 3D camera that's got 3D imagery and all this stuff, and we've got... Now, listen, Kevin, I take video now. Mm-hmm. I take video when I'm on inspection. I take a ton of pictures when I'm on inspection. I take a picture of myself when I'm on inspection, and the reason why is because I want to have a very good work file. But I'm telling you something, Kevin. If the appraiser never walks inside the house... And that opinion of value does not meet the contract price. It's going to be all hell to pay, and people are going to lose it, Kevin. They're going to lose it. And my biggest fear, my biggest fear is that you've got a lot of these new companies forming out there. Right. And they're getting big, and they got a lot of venture capital money behind them, okay? Now, let me ask you a question, Kevin. Let me ask you a question. Let's say, for instance, you're one of these companies, and you got a contract with a kind of a big regional bank, national bank, things like that, okay? Okay. And the appraisers never walk inside the house. And you've got a purchase situation. What if you are one of these companies and you don't make value on maybe three or four deals that month? Oh, geez. Okay, now, well, now hold on. It gets it gets weird. So you don't make value on three or four deals. Somebody in one of these companies is going to get an earful from the selling agent, from the seller themselves. Okay, I'm going to talk about the seller in just a minute. I'm going to talk about what happens to the seller after the closing table in 2022. This is one thing that no one understands. In 2022, there's a different reaction to the seller than in 2019. But what happens if all of a sudden, three or four or 10 or 15 or however many of these contracts don't come in at the contract price, what is that lender going to say to that appraisal company? He's going to sit there and say, what the hell's going on? What the hell is going on? Is this desktop product of yours so good? Is it really that great? I mean, we've got all these people calling us up every single day, screaming and hollering at us, saying the appraiser never walked inside the house. Are you sure your product is really that good? And then some of these companies at that time are going to say, well, oh my gosh, you know, well, we've got some issues here. You see, right. we've got some issues and we got a really pissed off client and we got some venture capital money into this company and we got to, we got to show a rate of return because VC people, they like rates of return. Right. Okay. And some of these companies are going to probably go, well, maybe we can or maybe we should. Bring out the rubbers? Bring out the rubbers! <laughs> yes! They're going to bring out the rubbers, Kevin! They're going to have more rubbers in a Vegas sausage party, my friend. There's going to be more rubbers. Rubber stamping, rubber stamping, that one, rubber stamping, that one. Here we go. we got another sales contract coming over. Brazier never went inside the house. Seller's going to be pissed up. Rubber stamp that, rubber stamp that. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! It is a fun time giving desktop products out for purchase transactions. My dear friends, my you guys think I'm crazy. You think I'm devil's advocating this thing entirely too much. But I have been in this business for 25 f-ing years, and I know what happens in this business. People get emotional. Right. They get emotional. And these big companies that are getting bigger and bigger. And I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, I look, look, I have nothing against these companies. The only firms I had an issue with since we started this podcast was the appraisal management companies because they were too parasitical. Right. Now they're starting to chill out a little bit because they know they need to have the appraisers. They need to have good relationships with us. I wish all of these companies the best of luck, but I'm just saying you better watch it because that little push is going to come if you guys aren't making the numbers. That's for sure. So, Phil, my question is with these appraisal management companies and they're trying to buddy-buddy with the appraisers now. Right, right. Is it too little, too late? Oh, yeah, of course it is, because we were never able to increase our numbers because they were too much of a parasitical company or parasitical business model that we were never able to increase our numbers in the last 10 years. Okay, That's why we have this so-called shortage today, right? Mm -hmm. But as far as these big companies are concerned, I wish them the best of luck. I really do. I wish them the best of luck. The only thing is, is that with any company like this, you have to understand that when push comes to shove, you have two decisions to make if the workflow starts to slow down or if you get any pressure to hit the number when it comes to the purchase contracts, and that is you either lay off or you break the law. You either lay people off 
or you break the law. I mean, seriously, it's an easy decision for me because right. I just lay people off. But when you have millions upon millions upon millions of dollars in venture capital money funding your company, they're going to want to have that rate of return, and that really does freak me out. Now, let's talk a little bit about the seller in today's market as well, Kevin. In 2019, if we appraised a property and it came in below the sales contract price, then let's say, for instance, it was like $10,000 or $15,000. A seller back then would kind of renegotiate. But the seller's reaction these days, Kevin, in 2022 is going to be different in a lower appraisal than the seller's reaction in 2019. And the reason why is this. In 2019, if a seller had to leave what they perceived as maybe $10,000 or $15,000 or $20,000 worth of equity on the table at the closing table, right. they would swallow that like a dead piece of meat. I mean, they would be upset about it. But they would move on. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about 2022, not 2019. 2022 is inflation. 2022 is price increases. So what's going to happen is, let's say, for instance, that seller goes ahead and has that closing. Mm -hmm. It's $15,000 short than what the seller thought they were going to get. They leave the closing table and they go home. Now what's festering in the back of their mind was the appraiser never went inside of the house. They're going to get home from being at the closing table, Kevin. And they sit down in his stews. The appraiser never went inside the house. The appraiser never went inside the house. And one of the spouses say, you know what? I'm going to go down to the liquor store and I'm going to get some bourbon because I'm upset because <laughs> the appraiser never went inside the house. So they go down to the liquor store and they're going to get the bourbon and the bourbon is going to cost more than it ever has before. And then while they're there, they're like, ah, well, I've got to get some gas anyways. So I'm going to go over to the gas station and they're going to pump their gas tank full and the gas costs more than it ever has before. And then the spouse is going to get a phone call from the other spouse saying, hey, by the way, we're in our new house and something broke, so you got to go down to the hardware store and pick something up, and he's going to go down to the hardware store, and he's going to pay for something more than what they ever have before. And all the while, all the while, that seller is going to be sitting there going, the appraiser never went inside the house. The appraiser never went inside the house. I've got $15,000 that I have left on the table, and the appraiser never went inside the house. And I am sitting there, and I am paying for more and more at the gas station, in the grocery store, at the hardware store. That (laughs) $15,000, I need it now more than I've ever needed it before. And now I'm really pissed off because of that $15,000. That's the difference for what I pay in food and gas and shelter for this year. Not to forget about health insurance as well because the... An appraiser never went inside, inside the, the house. house. That's what it is right there. <laughs> and they're going to be mad about it, Kevin, and they're going to be pissed off, and they're going to go home, and they're going to drink a little bit, and they're going to eat a little bit, and then they're going to go onto the state website, <laughs> and they're going to say, I'm going to report this guy, and I'm going to report the appraiser because they never went inside the house. And do you think the selling <laughs> agent's going to sit there and go, oh, don't do that, don't do that, no, no, we no, no, bullshit. The seller agent's going to be mad, too. The seller agent's going to be like, make sure you spell the appraiser's name right <laughs> yeah, let me, and, and let leave me, me get out the copy. of it. Let me, let, me, let me out of it. Let me get the copy. This is not going to work. So that's why a lot of the banks I've talked to, they're saying, let's just have the appraiser go inside the house, especially on purchase transactions. Folks, I have trained a lot of appraisers, okay? I've trained a lot, four of which are still in business today. And most of the time when I train them, it would take about a year to two years. I would never send a trainee out on a purchase transaction until they were about ready to take the examination and get their license. Okay, Okay. that's how emotional those transactions can be. So again, I wish these companies the best. I really do. And I know that Fannie Mae says you can do it. Mm -hmm. It's okay to do it. I understand that. But when it comes down to being right there at that street level, at that optics level, in that transaction, it's going to be a big problem. That is for certain. Remember, when I go out to an appraisal these days, folks, and I go inside the property, I'm not doing an inspection. I'm not doing an observation. I'm doing a presentation. I'm presenting myself as an expert, as an appraiser, a third-party, unbiased individual in these transactions, and also a market expert. Mm-hmm. It is a presentation that I'm doing. It has nothing to do with the fact of how fancy-dancy my camera is. It right. has nothing to do with how awesome my technology is. I am making the presentation, this is who I am, this is what I'm all about, because that's the most important thing in these kinds of transactions. And it's going to be a problem when those appraised values don't meet the sales contract price and everybody gets really emotional. So I wish these big companies the best of luck, but if this is how your entire business model is going to be focused on... Do you think they're going to be as big as CoreLogic? What, the companies that are forming right now? Yes. They're going to be CoreLogic, Kevin. 
<laughs> they're going to be core logic. They're not going to be as big. If I was core logic right now, I'd be sitting back going, you guys build, build, grow, grow. You've got venture capital behind you. Keep growing, keep growing, keep growing because we've got the money, Lebowski. <laughs> we've got all the money you ever needed in your entire life. So you go ahead and build up the networks. And when you do, we will be buying you out. We all will become part of the core, Kevin, the core. The core. That's what it is. We're all going to be part of the core. Aren't we already part of the United States of Core Logic? The United States of Core Logic (laughs) is coming to an appraisal shop near you, okay? I'm serious. And you know what? If that does happen, I hope that all of the people that bought into these companies make a ton of money. I really do. I wish them the best. I am not against people making money. Free enterprise. Free enterprise. If that's your strategic position you want to take, that's fine. But we can't get into the rubber party. We can't get into the sausage party in Vegas where all the rubbers come out and we start rubber stamping everything out there because that's going to damage the American society and the economy. Although I've tried to stand up for the American economy for so long. But I highly doubt there'll ever be another Procore Commission, another Glass-Steagall, anything along those lines, Kevin. I don't think it is. So there's some big changes. There's some big changes when it comes to these desktops. I like desktop products. I think they have a purpose and they have a place in the appraisal profession. When it comes to doing the desktop product on sales transactions, on purchase transactions, extremely, extremely dangerous. Okay, so in the next show... We're going to be going over the new report that came out of the ASC, the Appraisal Subcommittee, identifying bias and barriers promoting equity, an analysis of USPAP standards and appraiser qualifications criteria. Now, listen, this report that came out, now, a lot of appraisers are very upset about this report from the ASC. But I'm going to tell you something right now. It does hit some pretty good points. The Appraisal Foundation is under a microscope like you never believe. And the uniform standards of professional appraisal practice are really under a microscope. It is unbelievable what this report does, how it breaks down. It questions the authority of the appraisal foundation. It questions the entire wow. oh, the entire structure of the way the foundation is set up. It really breaks down the appraisal standards boards. It breaks down the misleading definition. Oh, it's got a problem. Oh. It's got a problem with the misleading definition. <laughs> and you know what? How many times have we said we have a problem with the misleading definition? Don't you, Kevin? How many exactly. times have we said that? How many so times? Many. How many of you out there today that are USPAP instructors, number one, sent me hate mail when we <laughs> did that one podcast? What was a podcast called? Perfection is now required, right? Yes. Perfection is now required. We hammered and we broke down the misleading definition. I received hate mail from USPAP, certified USPAP instructors out there <laughs> about how bad I was. We call, actually, they're not USPAP instructors anymore. You know what they are? What? You know what they are, Kevin? What? They're the appraisal Illuminati. That's what they are, Kevin. They're the appraisal Illuminati. That's what they are because they believe in the religion called USPAP. And the religion of USPAP, I think, may be coming to an end with this ASC report. And remember, the PAVE report isn't out yet. The PAVE report is coming out from the Biden administration. And I'm telling you right now, that appraisal foundation and USPAP itself, the very core of USPAP, is going to be questioned. And when it comes to the misleading definition, when it comes to all of these issues with USPAP, I'm not going to go to the appraisal foundation. I'm going to talk to those people that are on the appraisal standards board. I'm going to talk to all of the appraisers that are members of the appraiser Illuminati, the certified USPAP instructors. Right. And I'm going to ask them one simple question. Actually, I can't ask him the question, Kevin. I can't ask him the question because I'll get in trouble if I do. So I'm just going to let the Joker ask the question for me. What happened? Did your, your balls drop off? Yes, that's what it is, Kevin. That's exactly what it is. And where were you when the misleading definition was put out? Balls drop off. Why didn't you guys come together and say something about the misleading definition? Balls drop off. Why weren't you out there saying, this is bad, we need to change it right now? Balls drop off. They got rid of the appraiser practices board after one congressional hearing. Why didn't you get rid of the, the misleading definition? Balls drop off. Is it really that bad? Balls drop off. Some of you Illuminati are actually the leaders of national appraisal organizations balls drop off some of you are actually the incoming presidents of national appraisal organizations balls drop off some of you are big supposedly podcast guys out there that stand up for real estate appraisers balls drop off why didn't you change it why didn't you change it and now look at it and now look at it Ah, Kevin, the misleading definition. And we've had it now for going on three years because the coronavirus held everything back. Right. It's the most toxic form of USPAP out there (laughs) ever, and no one did anything about it for three years, Kevin, for three years. Why must we be the ones, Kevin? Why must we be the ones to stand up to the religion of USPAP and just basically say that this is nothing more than a set of standards? It's a set of standards that we need to follow. It's not a religious experience. 
this group from the ASC, the appraisal subcommittee, hammers down the fact that they come out with this two-year revision. It hammers it down. It brings up the fact that we don't talk about fair housing enough. We don't. We don't. We waste seven hours of education every two years over little changes you make in this stupid little thing. And and we don't even bring up fair housing. And they certainly don't bring up antitrust. That was not in the ASC report. But they got to bring up antitrust. If you make antitrust part of USPAP and fair housing part of USPAP, maybe you'll change around some of the conversation that's going on in the Facebook pages today. It's unbelievable. And it's coming to an end. The big Lord of the Flies experiment <laughs> known as the Appraisal Foundation has now got fresh eyes on it, and there's going to be some big changes. I'm not going to get into the report itself because I want to see what the PAVE report looks like, too. So I want to get all those together and give my comments on that as well. But it is. It, we, we've warned you about it. We've warned you. And I'll tell you something else that's going to happen, and we called this. We called this big time. There is going to be a fundamental change in the way the foundation and USPAP is structured. Exactly. And bottom line is it's going to go more towards the consumer advocacy position. And we called that in 2019 with the FindMyAppraiser.com professional network. That's what it was all about, consumer protection in the home buying process. We knew it was on the way. It's still out there today. It's still active. We don't charge for FMA, but it's evergreen. It will stay out there for as long as I keep it up, all right? So that's it. It's going to be about consumer advocacy, and it's going to be about transparency. Transparency in the appraisal process. One of the topics that the ASC report talks about is having the intended user be the borrower as well, okay? Right. Transparency, I don't have a problem with it. If there's a reconsideration of value, if there's a question with my appraisal, a question with anything I did, put it on a Zoom call, let's record it, let's go over it, let's talk it out, let's figure out what the situation is. I'll tell you what I did, and i tell you how I did it. It's all transparency. So I know a lot of people are very upset about this ASC report, but I'm very excited because some of the things they talk about have been issues that we've been talking about on this show for what? Since 2014, and especially when it comes to the FMA network, we were right on topic when it comes to the consumer protection side. So basically, Phil, what you're saying is we're kind of like... The Simpsons, where we were ahead of oh, everybody gosh. else. We, we are, we are, I, I, we're, we're so, we're so Homer Simpson. It's unbelievable. You don't, know, don't. that's what it is right there. We're so Homer Simpson. And I'll tell you something else with this consumer protection thing. Now, I want you to listen to me really good on this one. Okay. I want you to listen really, really good on this. Let's bring it back to the desktops and we'll end the show on the desktop appraisal. Sometimes someone goes out to the house mm-hmm. and has a video of the house. Okay. They do a video camera, right? 3D inside the house. Now I've got video that I take inside of homes too. Now, under USPAP, I'm going to quote USPAP, the USPAP Illuminati will be with me on this, okay? I got a confidentiality situation here. So any picture I take, any video I take, no matter what, I have to keep that in my work file. I'm not sharing that with anybody. That's data that's not shared with anybody except for the intended user. And maybe, maybe if a judge says you got to share it in court. Right. Okay, that's someone's personal data right there. That's their photographs. That's their video. Some of these desktop products, when that video is taken, that data Because it's a data collector, it's a data collecting company, not an appraiser that didn't go inside the house, Mm -hmm. that data can be sold. That data, Kevin, that data can be sold. Uh Do you know how important it is that I know your data, especially the data on that house? Because that data collector is going to ask the same questions I ask. Right. How old is the furnace? How old is the air conditioner? How old is the roof? Well, if I had that data and I had it fresh, don't you think I would be able to sell that to somebody that would be interested in selling you? a new HVAC system, selling you a new roof. You see, right? that's big data. Big data is worth billions upon billions upon billions of dollars. And when it comes to a consumer advocacy position, does a consumer have to worry that their data, that their videos, these things are going to now be out in somebody else's hands and right. not the appraiser that has a confidentiality rule that we have to adhere to? You see? See how this all kind of flows all over the place there, Kevin? It gets crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It gets crazy. It really does. So I wish all of the best to all of you out there today. If you are in one of these big companies, I wish you the best. I really do. I hope you make tons and tons of money, but you have to watch the emotions and the optics of these transactions. It is so important because right now I'll tell you, I've got two friends of mine who just got sent up to the state of Ohio on a complaint level because the opinion of value didn't meet the contract price. Wow. And and I got another one that's going to be sent up the river next week. The lady already said, I'm going to do it. How many more of these do you think we'll see where, like you said, these bigger companies and that some guy behind a chair is like, well, 
Yeah. You didn't hit the number that we needed to hit, so we're going to report you. And how good is the argument going to be when the complaint form says the appraiser never, never went, went inside, inside the, the house. house? I know. On a purchase transaction, that cannot happen. That cannot happen. So, Kevin, that's what it is. It's going to be a wild and crazy, awesome weekend, Kevin, <laughs> in the Who city did? of Central. Who did who did? Hey. I tell you right now, in Burrow we trust, Kevin. In Burrow we trust. The Bengals will bring home the victory. My poor family, I tell you, we are so torn. Because I mean, you know half my family's from Cincinnati, right. the other half's from Los Angeles. In Burrow we trust, Kevin. In Burrow, in Burrow we trust. We Come trust. Sunday, the Cincinnati Bengals, they're going to exercise some demons, Kevin. They're going to exercise some demons and bring victory to this great city of Cincinnati. All good things, Kevin, come from the great city of Cincinnati. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our show, and as always, I would like to thank you for listening as we've journeyed through the mysteries and complexities that are, in fact, the real estate appraisal business. I would like to thank my producer, Kevin Kinney, for being here for his thoughtful insight and knowledge. God willing, we're going to be back here very soon after the Bengals victory, after Kevin. The victory. After the victory, continuing to report on the front <laughs> lines of the real estate market. In the meantime, you kiss your spouse, you hug your children, enjoy your day. Be safe in the field. You've been listening to Phil Crawford on Voice of Appraisal. We'll talk very soon. What happened? Did your balls drop off? Oh, <laughs> Kevin! Who day, baby? Who day? <laughs>